If you have a ProColor DTF printer and you're not getting the best quality prints, stick around. I'm going to walk you through the exact print settings and saturation that I personally use to get high quality prints. And if you don't believe me that the print settings truly matter, check this out. This top one is the print settings that I personally use. And the other two are ones that don't have very great saturation and one that has no settings at all. This is probably the answer you've been looking for and I've simplified the entire process. But before we jump into it, make sure that you're subscribed and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos, especially on these ETF printers. Creating the perfect print settings doesn't have to be hard and I've simplified the entire process for you. So today we are going to touch on two things. The first one being saturating our white ink and the second one getting rid of those generic print settings. Both of these are going to start in the Pro Rip software that you should already have downloaded. But once that window's open, head on over to that top right hand corner and you'll see those two arrows. That bumps us over to the maintenance tab. In the center here is this glowing printer. Make sure you select that and double check that your printer is the default printer. As long as that checks out, then you are ready to select property. And if this window opens and you're like, holy crap, I'm too far over my head, I promise you it's three easy steps. We are going to start in this top drop down section. I believe the default print settings are set at the very first one and we need the very last one, which is 1441 by 1441. This is very important so that we have no pixelation and everything digitizes the way that we would like it. Then we need to drop down into our saturation section. All of the colors are going to stay at 85% except for your white heads. You need to raise those all the way up to 100. We need max pigmentation. Personally, I haven't found that changing the density changes the actual feel or texture on the material. I don't think it makes it much thicker, not noticeably thicker at any point, but what it does is give this a nice white solid base so that your designs stand out even on the darkest of materials. That is all we need to change within this window. So we will select okay. At this point, these settings should be permanent, but I do recommend closing that window and then reopening your print properties tab just to make sure that it is saved and nothing has been accidentally changed. You have officially tackled the first half of these settings and we are moving over to the second half, which is just customizing our very generic print presets. In the top right hand corner, you will see a different type of printer. Make sure you select that and then a window will open with a bunch of tabs. I promise it looks a lot worse than it actually is. In the top left hand corner of all of these tabs, you will see shortcuts. There are already a bunch of different shortcuts that I just don't recommend. There's none that work best or have the highest quality for DTF prints, which is why I've just found a great way to customize my very own. So starting in this first tab, I like to bump all the way to the right hand side and use the best photo. These settings we just kind of build off of. The paper type I do like to change to glossy. That is the closest to the transfer film that I have found. Now this is optional, which is why at first it wasn't selected and then I go in and deselect it. On default, it is already selected, which is the enhanced photo. If you are using high quality images, you do not need to select this. Personally, I never use it unless I accidentally leave it on. Now moving over to the next tab, you will see that high speed is selected. High speed is the worst thing for high quality prints, so please deselect that if you don't do anything else. That is the most important. I don't actually change anything else over on this tab, but I did want to show you if you wanted to go in and critique a couple different colors or make things a little bit more saturated, this is where you would do so. For myself personally, I don't feel the need to do that, but I did want to mention it here in case you wanted to go in and work with these settings further. The page layout tab is our last section and the only thing we need to select is mirrored image. It's very important for pretty much all of your designs. Now, unlike our first setting that we changed, these are not going to be permanent. We need to make a shortcut. So bump back over to that shortcuts tab and at the bottom, you will see add remove. Select that button and then you will see about halfway down the page, it says name. You can name this whatever you would like. I'm just going to choose high quality prints. It's going to work best for me. I will definitely understand. If you wanted to go in and change these or make a non mirrored option, you could do the same exact thing and have a few different settings. Then you can be fun and customize it a little bit further with a little photo that makes you happy. For me, I love the beach and I love sunsets, so what's better? 
once again, when you bump out of there, just go back in and make sure that everything is actually saved. And at this point, you have tackled all of the print settings and you are ready to get into printing. Now, I will say as soon as you print, you'll probably see a huge difference. And I would like to say that the print settings make that huge difference, but 90% of it is that white ink saturation. Having that bold, bright back on your designs, it makes a humongous difference, especially if you're working with darker materials. Before I head out, I would like to thank you for joining my video today, and I hope that these change the game for you. But I also hope this was a simplified version of walking you through some print settings because I know it can be a little overwhelming in the beginning. If you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments below and let me know if you would like to see any future tutorials on the Pro Color. I personally have the F8, but I do know that there are a bunch of other options out there. Make sure you are subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And I hope you have the best day.